doing? I'm just going to open up and be honest here. I've been going through a little bit of a wobble with my art recently. Today's video was me trying to carpet that DM and break through an art block. It was admittedly a very temporary art block, like I did a full painting the week before and I was really happy with it. Then the blank white pages of my sketchbook suddenly became just so intimidating and normally in that situation I would stare at it, scrabble around trying to come up with a new and exciting idea, spiral down into another pit of self-doubt not today. Instead, I am drawing my own seeds. I've been drawing a lot of the same characters for a long time, like a really very long time. I've been drawing this particular guy and his friends since I was in high school. Um, while recording this voiceover, I'm pondering whether it pop some evidence of this up on screen. Answers will appear on screen now. This has evolved from being a comic idea to a different comic idea to another different comic idea and it is now a half planned out novel series which will probably have occasional page illustrations if it ever happens. Anyway, this guy's name is Leon. He is 23 years old at the time of the story beginning, where he discovers that there is a world of magic around him and he is at the very centre of it, which is a novel, unique and inspired idea. I know. Um, he's Scottish slash Scandinavian, living in London, which is where the story takes place, uh, and as well as being a magical boy. He's a programmer slash tech support guy and plays guitar in a metal band, because you know, my thing. Uh, his design has probably changed the least out of all of the characters from this lot and it's been bothering me for some time because story time. Back in the day, undercut hair was something that you only really saw like in goth clubs and metal bars. Then suddenly around 2015 or so, the man bun happened and ruined it. Like, ruined it. And I was sick of drawing that undercut he'd always had. It was always like shaved around forehead level and below. So yeah, this is kind of a redesign, but not really. He just has the same length of hair all over. I've only ever drawn him with poker straight hair before and I am not sure about the wave for it. It's kind of a bit too surfery with the blonde. I figure that he'd have that sort of blonde hair that bleaches in the sun, which is why he ends up with darker eyebrows and sideburns and such. Um, Anyway, this sketchbook has been sitting unloved since the beginning of the year. I've done a few quick studies for paintings that I wanted to plan out before they're a nice paper, but it's not really been a sketchbook. I've also been feeling very guilty about the amount of markers that I have, which rarely get looked at. Half of them have dried up, and then I went and got myself a set of Uhuhu markers, which I haven't really used much. Um, look, they're all vivid, there's nothing past on there at all, which doesn't work for me. Then, thanks to inspiration from some other wonderful artists I've seen on YouTube, I remembered that colouring pencils exist. So this is kind of like a mix-up of redesigning, slowly remembering an old medium and breaking in new techniques at the same time. Sketchbook! I've been slightly trying to rethink how I draw faces. This has come about since I was told by my wonderful husband that all my male characters look really feminine, even when I'm trying to make them look masculine. Which he wasn't wrong about, but I clearly still took it to heart. I do suffer from cookie cutter face syndrome. So with characters I draw frequently, I've been trying to get past that. Leon here is meant to have an already aquiline nose that's been broken in the past, fairly good cheekbones and a fairly rectangular face. Didn't really happen to this. Chin is too long and narrow or just too much jaw. <laughs> I have a habit of annotating sketches as I go. It's fun flipping through old sketchbooks and getting back into the moment of it, but um, yeah. Uh, sometimes it'll just be that I'm struggling with something I've drawn or I'm amused by something I've drawn. Uh, my favourite that I've come across was Kawaii in the Street, Senpai in the Sheets, which I worked out later was because I'd used a reference of a guy in a fairly simple pose for a bust shot that I just like the angle of and he was wearing that on a black t-shirt with hot pink hair and it just really tickled me. Also tickled me later when I saw it in a sketch of just a badass elf character <laughs> um, but yeah too much job.
This is my view today. Pleasant intermission with my cat, Ozzy. It rains here a lot. Somewhere in between rubbing out the pencil marks and jaw notes, I went back over some of the lines and cleaned them up a little bit. I also noticed that my 0.1 fine liner is actually darker than my 0.3, so I must have been using that one more than the other. Anyway, on to markers. Fun fact, some of them have been about for as long as this character has. Uh, the Windsor Newton and Uhuhu ones are nice and fresh. The letter sets and Copics, not so much. More fun story time. Some of these markers are actually no longer made and haven't been for some time. Uh, my first set of markers was Electra Set Trias, which, which seemed crazy expensive at the time. I think I got these when I was 15 using my birthday money. I'm old over 30. This was in the early 2000s. There weren't many big art sites and social media was not a thing. If you wanted to research new art materials you had to either search really exact terms on Google or look it up in forums or get really lucky with friendly people in art shops. Uh, there used to be a great art shop here in Glasgow called, drumroll, the art store and they had a big stand of individual markers. No sets, just individual. I remember coming across this with huge wide eyes because I'd read that manga artists used alcohol markers and thankfully someone working there took the time to point me through what I might want. One or the other of us, probably me, was not that big on colour theory so it was some skin tones, some cold greys and a pretty rainbow. And these markers were five pounds a pop. Back then that was maybe about eight US dollars each, so it was an investment. Thankfully I was an early 2000s new metal kid so these were really all the colours that I needed. I remember Copics coming into the shop a year or so later, they had Sketch and Chows and I was amazed at how cheap the Chows were. Like they actually really were cheap in comparison, like three pounds or something each. A while later Electroset brought out their Pro Markers and, and eventually got bought out by Windsor & Newton and now we have Pro Marker brush markers which are my absolute favourite. They're also a lot cheaper now than Copic Chows. Funny world. Somewhere back here um, I took a quick pause and dabbed some isopropyl alcohol into a few of these to wake them up slightly. It does dilute the ink but I did the job for what I was wanting, like I did ju really just want his hair to be super pale, if not even filled in the eyelashes with liner, definitely one of my crutches with drawing eyes, I cannot do eyelashes, like I occasionally manage to add in something that looks a bit like a cat eye, but my feminine features and female presenting characters are especially lacking, so that needs work. Yeah, long explanation for my blonde hair markers being old. Um, incidentally, the warm grey Uhuhu marker that I lined around the outside of this with at the end is a perfect dark blonde colour. So at least I'm not that for the future. Um, I've done his eyes slightly differently from how I normally would for the lower lashes and such. And I quite like him. Definitely something I'll play about with later. I've not spoken about my coloured pencils yet, purely because they're nothing special. <laughs> I don't really know whether they're worth recommending. I know very little about coloured pencils. Um, they were a big multi-pack from WH Smith. They're fine, a little bit scratchy. I checked their website and they do appear to still sell them or something very similar at £10 for 36 Um, But they look kind of different, it looks like the same colour as on. I don't honestly remember buying these, but I have them. 
I remember a friend at art school telling me that she loved the, the blue ones for sketching. Um, I decided I'd give it a go because they seem cheaper than Color A's, but Color A's won. I tried to do some sort of directional ambience with this. Because it was raining so heavily while I was drawing, I wanted to give it a cold feeling like maybe there's a cloudy sky above him or street lights behind or something. I don't know if it works. I, I gave up on that. To be honest, I didn't really want to spend the time to do the background. I was quite happy with how it was and didn't want to ruin it. I like how his hair turned out, so that's something. <laughs> it's got some life to it, even if it doesn't look realistic. I forgot to draw his freckles. He should have freckles. Pretend it's winter. Here's the point where my phone battery died. Rather than charging it and continuing to film, I just finished it and went to bed because priorities. Anyway, here's the finished thing. Don't know if this is a method I'll stick to, but I enjoyed working on them, so yeah, there's that. If you got this far, then thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Again, I'm new to this, so would love your feedback or even just a like and subscribe if you're feeling so generous. Thank you.